Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick. After nearly a year of COVID-19 cancellations and cutbacks, Indiana businesses, restaurants, hotels, hospitality venues are preparing for what could be a much needed shot in the arm. The entire NCAA men's basketball tournament, all rounds of March Madness and the final four will be held right here in Indiana. The NCAA says those venues will be able to have up to 25% of capacity with physical distancing. Now the game's already expected to have a $100 million impact on the state's economy, but could the addition of fans boost that number in a big way? For an answer, please to welcome back to the show, Visit Indies Senior Vice President Chris Gall. As always, uh, uh, Chris, welcome. Gary, thanks for having me on. I'm inside the convention center where basketball courts are already starting to be put down in anticipation of March Madness. Yeah, a lot of people looking forward to next month, to be sure. Uh, did that surprise you, the 25% number? I talked to people who were anticipating there would be fans, but they were pretty excited, pretty happy that, hey, it was at least up to that 25% mark. It was a big, big win. It was a win that uh, the NCAA put uh, the health and safety of, of, of fans first and foremost. And so they're working in lockstep with Marion County and the health department. It was a very big win in terms of how it will boost the economic impact felt by this event. And so we were just so incredibly thankful that the NCAA was so thoughtful in this decision making, both putting the health and safety of the visitors, but also allowing a few more stands and visitors, uh, fans in the stands and visitors, because we know that will boost the overall economic economic impact of, the, of uh, the, the event in the 30 days that the city hosts the event. Yeah, Chris, any way to calculate how, how much additional, as I mentioned, uh, the early uh, expectation was maybe $100 million in economic impact uh, from having the entirety of March Madness here. How much more could this add? Well, as a point of perspective, the last time we hosted the NCA uh, Final Four it was $225 million in economic impact. Certainly, there's a lot of un unknown factors. And so, Team Indy, led by the Indiana Sports Court, we're going to lean on an economist from Rockport Analytics. This is the same firm that helped us with the impact of the Super Bowl in 2012, the same economist who has helped us develop our Visit Indy Economic Impact Calculator. And so, this firm is going to really look at all the hundreds of variables, arguably thousands of variables, that go into hosting March Madness in its entirety. And and we're going to have a post-game report on just how healthy this event was. And no matter how much is derived from March Madness being hosted here in its entirety, it's a much-needed boost because we know that nearly 50 percent of the tourism workforce, 83,000 men and women in total, nearly 50 percent are currently underemployed or not employed. And so this is going to have Hoosiers earning paychecks and back working in our hotels, our museums, and, our rest and restaurants. And so much-needed boost no matter the total once the nets are cut down. You have uh, really a staggering number you point out there in terms of the employment and the hospitality sector. Chris, do, do you look, are, are people looking at March Madness, the Final Four, as perhaps a springboard, a reopening, if you will, in particular for downtown Indianapolis? Without question. We know that other meeting planners nationwide, other event planners are scratching their head. They're wondering, uh, why is Indianapolis able to host March Madness in its entirety during a pandemic? And that's causing other meetings uh, to, to, to look at Indianapolis, to prospect Indianapolis. And so we have a lot of proof of concepts. Since last July, we've hosted 51 in-person meetings, anywhere from 50 to 5,000 individuals. And so each of those is a proof of concept that we, Team Indy, can pull off these events. And so without question, hosting March Madness, a lot of eyes, a lot of attention, and a springboard, kind of forward momentum, continued momentum, heading into 2021 to book future meetings, to get residents back downtown, and to drive tourism here as we would normally enjoy a big uh, amount of visitors to the city in, in April, um, moving into May, June, July. So really a, a lot of momentum behind hosting this event. I, I know, Chris, you're pulling out a couple of pages from the Super Bowl playbook when it comes to uh, service workers and getting them engaged and trained and those types of things. Our super service program debuted, to your point, Gary, in 2012 to get our hospitality workforce ready for the big game. We are doing the same thing and getting, this time virtual, our men and women in the hospitality industry onto Zooms, into breakout rooms, to get them ready to welcome the world to Indianapolis in time for March. And so we go through methodically what to know, when, when the games will have lulls so that restaurants can staff up during in between games. We're making sure docents at museums are ready. And so that's a best practice we, we've continued through since the Super Bowl and we'll put in place in the next two weeks is our super service program to make sure that Hoosier hospitality is, is more than a catchphrase. 
Chris Gull, Vice President, Senior Vice President at uh, Visit Indy. I know you're a busy guy right now, uh, Chris, so uh, thanks for joining us. I know we'll be talking throughout the month of March, and good luck uh, with everything going on. Thanks for having me on, Gary.